Okay, good morning. Um, I'm back. And um, it's been a couple of days now um, since I put in the dividing wall, break that in. It's all set up and dry. And now what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and um, start forming up for the pour. And this is a relatively straightforward job. Um, and there's lots of videos on, you know, forming and pouring different types of material. This is not concrete, this is refractory material, but uh, really no difference uh, as far as the forming and the pouring. So I'm going to crawl in here in just a second and show you the, uh, the wall as best I can from uh, a better perspective than this. But you can kind of see it right there. Uh, it's all uh, level and plumb, um, it's good to go. It runs all the way back to about here on the floor, underneath the floor, and I cut some uh, wedges from the brick to kind of wedge in this part of the floor, the part that I'm salvaging, so that it has uh, direct support under it. And uh, you'll see that in a second here, it went after eye crawling. Give me just a minute, I'm going to crawl in and then I'll bring it back and take a look around and then we'll take it from there. Thanks. Okay, I'm back and uh, I'm inside the machine now, as you can tell. And a um, little cramped in here, but it's not terrible. And this is uh, a better view of that wall that I just put in. Um, this is still the front area, the open area. This whole area here is where we're going to re-pour the floor up to about right there. And uh, let me see if I could just get in here and show you from this perspective, looking back towards the front of the machine, but underneath what happened here. And uh, there you go. That is the wall. As you can see, it doesn't go all the way to the very end because remember, these gases have to travel through this side and then turn the corner and come back around. That rod that you see there uh, sticking out, that is the thermocoupler for this machine and that's what uh, allows it to read the chamber temperature when it's running. And, um, you know, you could see I put this wall in. I did the best I could to wedge it all in under there so that you could uh, so the floor will be protected and and supported from underneath and then the other part of this that I wanted to show you before I started putting in these forms because it's gonna once the forms are in it's much more difficult to see but so basically what you're looking at here is this edge right here. And let me just brush it off so you, it, it gets you a better view of it. Um, but this edge is where the new floor is going to sit. So when you build this thing, when you do the refractory, which you'll have an opportunity to see here in a bit uh, when we rebuild these things, but these bricks are come out, they're offset just a bit. This set right from here down that goes from the floor to here. And then these are the walls, the internal chamber walls of the machine. The floor will sit on this wall as well as the wall that I just replaced right here, as well as this wall. It's going to run from one side of the machine to the other. And you can see that. It's not much, but it's plenty to hold the refractory once it sets up. And it, I'd say that uh, that's sticking out maybe just shy of an inch. But it, it will hold. And then it, it pours right up against this face. And then this, this particular case is going to be pouring up against the, uh, this piece of uh, floor that's remaining here. Let me just going to be poured along this edge here from about here to here. This is going to be the width of the floor. Let me see 
I am not, there we go. Um, so from here, this edge where the floor sits, to here is the actual floor. And you can see it's going to come into the old floor. And then I'm just going to lap it over a little bit. And it'll be fine. It's going to hold just fine. We've done this before. It's not an issue. Um, but I do need to put forms underneath before I can pour. And that's uh, essentially it. So you're looking about this area right here as the width of the new floor that's going to get poured. And, and trust me, that's a fair bit of material, even for this small area, because this is just going from back here, where the floor collapsed, to the front here. And then you can see the rest of the, the floor. Is, the rest of the floor is actually pretty pretty darn good shape. It, it's holding up just fine. It, it will be OK. Particularly since it only really needs to last maybe another five to six months and then we're going to tear the whole thing apart uh, Put it back together brand new All right, well, let me get the let me get the form in here and then I will uh, Come back to you uh, when the forms are all done so you can take a look at that and uh, then we'll Probably for maybe even tonight Okay, thank you. Okay. Welcome back. Um it's a couple days later. It's been super busy. Uh, I was able to get the forms in and uh, everything's finished inside the machine. We're getting ready to pour this. I wanted to show you what the forms look like, you know, the center wall, how it all ties together. And uh, I'm sitting out here in the parking lot of our facility and you can kind of just give you a little view. But what I really wanted to just show you is um, the full moon. It's really full and, um, you know, nice to work under these type of circumstances. Beautiful night and it's getting on in time, but that's okay. We'll get this job done pretty quick here once we get started. I want to take you inside for a second and, uh, or actually for a while. And there's uh, our auto loader. You've seen that in other videos. There's the number two machine. I did an instruction video on that. Uh, it's been working really hard because the number one machine over here has been down uh, with its floor repair. So this thing is really like having to work double time. But so over here is where we're going to be working. And give you a quick peek in here and then I'm going to take you inside and I'll show you everything that happened kind of explain it for those that you know are looking to do this somewhere else um, but before I do that the castle materials we're using right here it's called uh, Mizzou it's a Harbison and Walker product and there is the label uh, the item number castable plus and these are 55 pound bags uh, that's what they look like on top and then we're also adding and I wasn't going to do this but I thought the better of it um, usually I mix one bag of these uh, stainless steel needles uh, with every bag of Mizzou so it's a um, one to one mixture what I'm doing now because I am going to tear this floor back out in a few months is just doing um, one bag of stainless steel needles to uh, two pounds of, uh, or I'm sorry, two bags of Mizzou. Can you open up one of these bags so I can show what these needles look like? Just tear the top off and, and uh, pull a few of these out or I'll pull them out. Sorry, my camera uh, abilities are quite limited. But this is what these needles look like. And they're stainless steel. They're one inch. You can order them from Harbison and Walker in Portland, and they'll ship them to you. They're kind of pricey, but they're worth every dime. If you look up on this roof, in particular in this application, you'll see all those little specks on the roof. Those are all the needles, the stainless steel needles that I poured when we did this last. And basically what that's... Um, doing is tying all that together so you don't have any major cracks and the thing just doesn't uh, collapse on you. 
So it, it's always a good idea to use these things, but you know, it's up to you. I think it's well worth the cost to, to add them. And again, it would be one bag of needles per uh, one bag of refractory. So give me a second, I'm gonna climb in here so I can give you a couple close-ups of this thing and then I'm gonna set it on a tripod and we're gonna start pouring. Stand by. and honestly I, I don't know that this won't be just one video I don't do the editing so um, when that gets done if it gets too long we'll break it up into multiple parts but if we can do it you know and kind of abbreviate stuff we'll do that too so um, right there are the forms so basically what I have underneath here are just your standard donkey type setup one in front one in back that's half inch plywood there. And then the, um, you can see the bricks that I laid in there. And if you look in the corners, you'll see those shelves. Well, when we do the rebuild, I'll show you how, how that works. But just know that that is that edge and that edge over there hold this thing up along with this center wall. And this center wall was the thing that collapsed and that I had to rebuild uh, here in the last few days. And then that black tape back there is just acting as a dam so I don't lose a bunch of mud because, again, that stuff's expensive. And I have the same thing under this part of the floor that I just dammed up but further in. But you can see that that's pretty level, pretty plumb. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it as close as you can because, again, what's going to happen is that once this sets up, once we pour it and we let it set up for just naturally dry for a couple days, and then after that, uh, we have to cure it using heat, and I'll show you how that works uh, coming up. But the bottom line is uh, once you get this thing hot enough, all this plywood and the 2x4s underneath will burn off and just it'll uh, be, be ready to, um, to use. So um, stand by for just another minute. I'm gonna put you on the tripod and then, um, you know, this is probably gonna get boring because we're just mixing uh, refractory and pouring it in here and then I have to smooth it out with some trowels and stuff like that, but you'll get to see the finished product when we're done. So, thank you.